let us review the ideas of hybridization and we're going to talk about the molecule methane. Simplest example we can use to just be clear of what we're talking about when we discuss hybridization. So methane. Methane is CH4. Uh, we can draw out a Lewis structure. There we go. When we talk about hybridization, we're going to talk about carbon. So carbon um, has four attached atoms. And it has zero lone pairs. And so therefore, we need, we're going to need four, four hybrid orbitals under the hybridization model. So remember, hybrid orbitals are new atomic orbitals. So these are AOs on carbon. So unhybridized, what does carbon look like, at least in its valence orbitals? Well, we have an S, particularly that's the 2S orbital, and we have three 2P orbitals. Well, each of these P orbitals, we, one's PX, one is PY, and one is PZ. When we undergo hybridization of carbon, we take these valence atomic orbitals, of which there are four, and since we need four hybrids, we throw all four of these orbitals into a blender, a virtual blender, and we get out four new orbitals. And what do we call them? We call them sp3 hybrids. So we put in four orbitals, and we get out four orbitals. And these are brand new orbitals, and we call them hybrid orbitals. Great. What do we do with these hybrid orbitals? We now use these four hybrid orbitals to connect to, top of the middle of the screen, the four attached atoms that we counted out. So when we counted out, we have four attached atoms. We were thinking, we need four hybrids. So we're going to use the, each of those hybrids to, to bond to each of those um, hydrogens. So here's our carbon. Our carbon's going to have poking off of it, this sp3 hybrid. And it's going to interact with a hydrogen. And hydrogen only has one orbital. It only has its s orbital. So there's really no clarification on hydrogen needed. Each atom brings an electron to the bonding picture, and so we're going to mix these orbitals together. We're going to mix the sp3 atomic orbital, it's a hybridized orbital, and the 1s of hydrogen. And we're going to mix them, we're going to add them two ways. We're going to add them and subtract them. By adding these two orbitals, we're going to make a new sigma bond and we kind of have sort of shown what this sigma bond looks like, we also get an antibonding orbital. Now notice, we put in two orbitals, two AOs in. We put in the sp3 and the s. That means we have to get out two uh, new molecular orbitals. What are the two molecular orbitals? There's the sigma and the sigma star. This is really no different than what we talked about over on the right. We have four unhybridized atomic orbitals, and we get out four hybridized orbitals. We have to conserve the number of orbitals in the picture. So uh, back on the left, how many times do we do this, this bonding picture? We do it four times. So we take our four sp3 hybrids and mix them with each of the four s orbitals, and we end up getting out a total of eight orbitals because we put in four sp3s and four um, s's for the hydrogen. And so total we get eight orbitals. We get four sigma bonds and four sigma stars. And so this is what our total picture looks like. I mean, we haven't drawn it out, but, but we get out eight molecular orbitals. Where those eight orbitals come from? Well, they came from eight atomic orbitals those eight atomic orbitals were our four sp3 hybrids on carbon, and we had an s orbital on each of our four hydrogens. So we had four s's and four sp3s, and that's how we got our eight atomic orbitals. And that is the complete bonding picture for methane under the hybridization model. And we like the hybridization model of methane because we said, well, if, if these hybrids are equally spaced, and, and they would be, then that would give us a predicted uh, 
bond angle of 109 and a half. And sure enough, experimentally, that's what we see. So the experimental data is matching what our model would predict. And that is evidence that our model is working. Here comes the bad news. There's experimental data on methane that contradicts what the hybridization model says. So maybe the hybridization model works to predict things like geometries, but really it's not the full picture of what's going on. So now we need to think what could possibly be a better picture than hybridization. And so we'll talk about that later.